Okay, so how I overcame my anger at women. Hello! What's going on, beautiful human beings? I thought I would do a video talking about my healing journey. Let's be honest. I was really traumatized and angry, so it's probably going to be a series of videos. Not all of them are going to be happy-go-lucky. In fact, I don't even know what you're doing here. You know, you could just go to the main channel and have all kinds of fun things going on. Sasha's having a great time. Spiritual podcast channel. But you're here, aren't you? You came here probably because you got your own stuff you're working on. So I applaud you for that. Okay, so how I overcame my anger at women. First step to overcoming anger, or I would say even any type of healing whatsoever, is figuring out the source of the problem, right? So in this case, the source of my anger. My anger came from my mom's. Surprise, surprise. My mom was a manic depressive rageaholic. So she'd be in these crazy fits of depression where she'd also be angry and yelling and like saying the meanest, worst possible things you can really imagine and often throwing things. She liked to take these big boots she had. She would just throw these big ass Russian boots at my head. Uh, shoes at my head, other shoes, uh, any, random objects, like anything. And uh, and that was that was just normal. The one bonus there was I was dodgeball champion at school for like years. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh! Oh. <laughs> any other questions? That was pretty cool. But it wasn't fun. And she would always be yelling, um, not only like the, the most horrible things, but things specifically to like tear me down. You know, like you're never going to be successful, you're stupid, you're going to be a garbage man, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. So it was a combination of psychological abuse and physical abuse that was basically nonstop. Basically nonstop. And uh, also, she was a perfectionist. So if I made any kind of mistake, like at all, like mistake, like writing something with a pen, mistake playing the piano. I'd get a shit kicking. I'd get a shit kicking for any reason, but really no no reason at all. Just no reason at all. So I was always in a constant state of fear. That was my default setting. The one woman that I loved unconditionally, right, was just always attacking me and making me scared shitless for no reason. Absolutely zero reason. So you probably wouldn't be surprised to hear that I had issues with women. <laughs> can you, can you, are you surprised? It, the, what, what made it worse for me was that like, not only was that going on, I had no father figure. My dad, when I was three, ran away from my mom because she was insane. Um, so I was all alone with that type of uh, violence. And when you're a kid and you have no idea what's going on, you know, you tend to blame yourself, right? Because you're just like, well, I must be, I must be bad. I must be no good. Maybe what she's saying is true. I knew that it was her, okay? I wasn't stupid. So I, I knew, I was like, okay, this is a tough spot I'm in, but I'm going to get through it. But yeah, I was shy. I didn't believe in myself. I was awkward. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a good start for me. So I don't know what kind of childhood you've had. Mine wasn't fun. And I was severely traumatized. Severely traumatized. And because of that, of course... I had trust issues with women. Of course, I was completely like clueless as to how to behave around women. I was shy, nervous, um, super needy, you know, t terrified, really terrified of the feminine because like, what, what would you expect with that kind of background? What do you think? I'm just going to be a Mr. Smooth. Hey, what's going on, ladies? What are you doing? You coming to the party later? I'm going to be there. So I know you're coming. Hmm? Hmm? Because I'm going to be there. So no, that wouldn't make any sense. So, so I grew up basically, you know, just a, it wasn't good. Shy, awkward kid. And as I became a teenager, man, I was pissed. I was pissed. I was so angry. Angry that the universe could do this to me. Angry that, angry at my mom. Angry at everything. Angry at the world. I was really, really an angry kid. And as I got older, 
it was like it was just a shit show. I'll be honest with you. It was just it was just so bad. And you know, I fell into this pattern, which I figured out later on in life. I had this brutal pattern of you know falling in love with these women who, of course, were were unstable and would dump me, so that I would basically feel betrayed and dumped the same way that my mother dumped me. Because for me, that was love. That was my pattern, right? I love someone, they leave me. I love someone, they abandon me, they leave me. That's what, you know, that's what we all do. We have these patterns. Just like somebody who had an alcoholic father, you know, will learn to drink to escape, uh, you know, responsibility if that's what your father did. Um, or, you know, if your mom was passive aggressive, you'd learn to be passive aggressive because just that, you know, that's 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 how we roll, right? Um, so. So as I got older, uh, it wasn't going well with the ladies. You know, I was pissed. I was making inappropriate jokes all the time, sex jokes, because I really wanted sex and companionship, but I just didn't know how to relate to women. So the the first part of my healing process, I would say, was the recognition that the abuse I was going through and, and the suffering I was going through, that it was impersonal. You know, it's not like my mom was like, hey, this kid's a real asshole. Let's fuck with him. You know, no. I realized that my mother herself was highly, highly traumatized. And she needed an outlet for that. She needed that pain had to go somewhere and I was the only one around, so I got the brunt of it. And it was really no more personal than that. I was there. That's it. And so this realization that my mom, because and in my you know, everyone's got their own specific scenario, pain, trauma, right? Everybody. But with my mother, her a father had died when she was about 10 years old and she was really, really close to him and she never got recovered. You know, this was like in the Soviet Union. So there was no counselors. There was no psychotherapists. They didn't have anything. It was just like tough shit. Vodka. They had vodka. So she never recovered from that. And God knows what other, you know, tough stuff she went through, you know, growing up in the Soviet Union. So, so she was just passing on a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff to the only person that, that was around. And furthermore, in her case, she, she had, I think she had psychological issues as well. And later on, I, uh, I started to theorize, and I believe I'm right, that she had some sort of, some entities, you know, there were some energies or entities or other beings that were, that had her hooks in her. Because when, you, when you'd see her scream, her whole face went, went red and she, she wasn't, it wasn't a human, it was something else. So I believe she was also possessed. Okay, well, while we're on the topic. Yeah, I've got a podcast all about that. <laughs> I can link to if anybody thinks I'm kidding. Um, so when, when so when I realized like it wasn't personal, and this was just her her own stuff that was being passed on to me, that's when I was able to start forgiving and start letting go and start you know processing the anger. But 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 recognizing that there is a source, you know, is really the first step because. If you don't, right? If you're just like, oh, well, I'm really angry at chicks and chicks hate me and I'm super, you know, and that's just how it is. Well, you're setting yourself up for a lifelong of suffering, right? Because you're not you're not willing to pinpoint and say this is the cause. You know, it's like it's like when somebody gets cancer, they're like, oh, we'll just give them chemotherapy. Chemotherapy doesn't get rid of the, re the reason that you actually got sick, whether it's like you, you know, you're highly stressed out or you were, had a really unhealthy lifestyle or you're smoking cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like... Okay, we're gonna kill these cancer cells and destroy your whole immune system at the same time. Great idea, um, but but you know what I mean. It doesn't deal with the cause; it's just the symptom. So once you find the cause of your trauma, of your of your anger, then you can begin the process. So for me, that was step one: the discovery of like, oh, okay, it was because of my mother. That was really step one of my of, of my healing. And uh, I'll be back shortly for video two. But let me know where you want me to take this. I'm losing light here, so we'll keep this video short. And I'll be back soon with the next part in the series. Like and subscribe and share it with people who need to hear it, which is everyone. So send it to everyone you know. And see you soon.